You know what? I appreciate you dropping by for my daily devotions. I've been doing this kind of a thing every day. It's changed over time, but for almost 52 years, in January, it'll be 52 years, I've been studying the Bible and doing daily devotions. Um, today, we're going to look at Revelation. It's October 29th. It's Sunday, and we'll, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 6, Matthew chapter 13, uh, Psalm 119, 153 through 160, and Exodus chapter 36. Yesterday, we read the fifth chapter of uh, Revelation. In verses 9 and 10, it says this, And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll to open its seal, because you were slain, and with your blood you purchased for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and they will reign on the earth. He purchased us, and he purchased us to be a kingdom of priests. That means people who stand between God and other people and get them together. That's that's the function of a priest. That's what we're supposed to do, okay? He purchased us with his blood to do that kind of work, and he made us a kingdom of priests to serve to serve our God and we will reign on earth when Jesus comes back. Wow. Hang on to that. Walk with the Lord. Serve him. Make him number one in your life. Revelation chapter six. Somehow or another, I read better without glasses. I watched as the lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, come. I looked and there before me was a white horse, its rider, held a bow and he was given a crown and he rode out as conqueror bent on conquest. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make men slay each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, come. And I looked and there before me, was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard what sounded like a voice uh, among the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a day's wages and three quarters of a barley for a day's wage, three quarts of barley for a day's wage, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the four living creatures, the fourth living creature say, come, I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given a power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, sovereign Lord, holy and true? until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood. Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and brothers who were to be killed as they had, had been was completed. There will be suffering and death for the kingdom. Rest assured of that. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair, the whole moon turned blood red, and the stars in the sky fell to earth as late figs drop from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. And the sky receded like a scroll, rolling up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth and the princes and generals, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and every free man hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who can stand? Who can stand is those who belong to Jesus. That's the answer to that question. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Once I find it, I have my Bible all marked for places to go in the lesson I'm teaching at church in a few minutes today in a couple hours, I guess. Verse thir chapter 13 of Matthew. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying a farmer went out to sow his seed. 
And as he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to, to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will and he will have an abundance. Whoever, whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing they do not see, and though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts in turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men love to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in, the, in, in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds, tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of God, is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy sows them, the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels. They will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be neat weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away, sold everything he had, and bought it. Once again, 
The kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. When it was full, the fishermen pulled it up on the shore. Then he sat down and collected the good fish in baskets, but threw the bad away. This is how it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you not, have you understood all these things? Jesus said, yes, they replied. He said to them, therefore, every teacher of the law who has been instructed about the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. When Jesus had finished these parables, he moved on from there. Coming to his hometown, he began teaching the people in their synagogue. And they were amazed. Where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers, they asked. Isn't this the carpenter's son? Isn't his mother's name Mary? And aren't his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Aren't all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, only in his hometown and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He did not do many miracles there because of their lack of faith. Psalm 119. And I spent some time in the Psalms and Proverbs every day. Psalm 119, 158, 153 through 160. Look upon my suffering and deliver me, for I have not forgotten your law. Defend my cause and redeem me. Preserve my life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked. They do not seek out your decrees. Your compassion is great, O Lord. Preserve my life according to your law. Many are the foes who persecute me, but I have not turned from your statutes. Look on the faithless and with loathing, for they do not obey your word. See, how I love your precepts. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your love. All your words are true. All your righteous laws are eternal. And then Exodus chapter 36. So he's talking about the uh, the people who are given wisdom to do, put together all the stuff, the craftsmen who put together all the stuff for the... Uh, um, uh, for the tabernacle, all that kind of thing in the, in the wilderness. So Bezalel, Oholiab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord has given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing, constructing the sanctuary are, do, are to do the work just as the Lord has commanded. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Oholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the, constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring free will offerings morning after morning. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work of the sanctuary left their work, left their work and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for doing the work the Lord commanded us to be done. Then Moses gave an order and sent his word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more. Never saw that in a church. Stop giving. No, nope, that has not been what I've experienced. But that they did because of their generosity, because God had blessed them. Because what they already had was more than enough to do the, all the work. All the skilled men among the workmen made the tabernacle with 10 curtains of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn with cherubim worked into them by skilled craftsmen. All the curtains were the same size, 28 cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the cube curtains together and did the same for the others, for the other five. Then they made the loops of blue material along the edge of the, of the end curtain in one set and the same was done with the end curtain in the other set. They also made 50 loops of one curtain and 50 loops on the end curtain of the other set and the loops opposite each other. Then they made 50 gold clasps and used them to fasten the two sets of curtains together so that the tabernacle was a unit. They made curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle, 11 to all together. All the 11 curtains were the same size, 30 cubits long and four cubits wide, they joined five of the curtains into one set and the other six into another set. Then they made 50 loops along the edge of the end curtain and one set uh, in one set and also along the edge of the end curtain in the other set. 
They made 50 bronze clasps to fashion the tent together as a unit. Then they made for the tent a covering of ram skins dyed red, and over that a covering of hides of, of sea cows. They made an upright frame of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame was 10 cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, with two projections set parallel to each other. They made all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. They made 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle and made 40 silver bases to go under them, two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, they made 20 frames and 40 silver bases, two under each frame. They made six frames for the far end, that is the west of the tab the west end of the tabernacle, and two frames were made for the corners of the tabernacle at the far end. All these two corners of the frames at these two corners of the frames were double from the bottom all the way to the top and fitted into a single ring. Both were made alike. So there were eight frames and sixteen silver bases, two under each frame. They also made crossbars of acacia wood, and five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west at the far end of the tabernacle. They made the center crossbar so that it extended from end to end at the middle of the frames. They overlaid the frames with gold and made gold rings to hold the crossbars. They also overlaid the crossbars with gold. They made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim worked into it by a skilled craftsman. They made four posts of acacia wood, wood for it, overlaid them with gold. They made gold hooks for them and cast their four silver bases. For the entrance to the tent, they made a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of, a, of an embroiderer. And they made five, five posts with hooks for them. They overlaid the tops of they overlaid the tops of the post and their bands with gold and made their five bases of bronze. Ah, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thanks for speaking to us. Change our lives, Father, according to the word that we've heard today. Write it on our hearts, Father. Make us new and different because we heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed big today, folks.